Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my series Collections Management. Sorry if it's a bit echoing here, you may notice we are on set here because I'm going to be showing you a lot of hats and I figured this was the best way to do it. Because a little over a year ago I did go through my entire hat collection here on the channel, show you all of my hats as I repack them into archival materials. And I do still have archival boxes that I'm storing all of these hats in as well, but these are the hats I've collected over the last year since I last updated you on my collection, so I wanted to show them all to you before I pack them away for safekeeping. And yes, keeping my hats packed up does mean I wear them less often than I would like to, especially because I don't leave the house as often as I would like to either. But uh, I would like to have a different solution in the future, of course. In my dream scenario, I have a separate room that I use as a dressing room or a closet, and I can create, like, you know how some people have a wall of shoes? I would like to have a wall of hats. Sorry, but I digress, let's take a look at some hats. And we will begin with the hat that I acquired most recently, which is this navy straw hat here. This may actually be from the late 30s or into the first half of the 40s, I would say. It's in really nice condition, actually. There's not even any stains on the sweatband, which is actually kind of surprising. But it's a very fine quality navy blue straw. It does have some Petersham ribbon up here. It's not actually grow grain, it's Petersham ribbon. It ties in two rows of ribbon with bows in the back here. And then it has these little accents of yellow, white, and red on the front also in ribbon then it does have a hat size label on the inside it says size 22 i'm a size 22 and a half but this luckily just purchase on the head at a sort of a jaunty angle and it's so there's no problem there and this kind of just sits like this or at least this is how i would wear it you can wear it actually back on the back of the head more i have a mirror here to see what i'm doing but you can also just wear these at a tilt, which of course is my favorite way to wear them. But this is a lovely navy blue straw number that was quite inexpensive, and I found this at my favorite vintage shop in Denver, which is called Boss Vintage. It's on Broadway, so if you are in the Denver area or are passing through, I highly recommend checking out Boss Vintage. I really didn't need this hat because I actually have plenty of navy blue straw hats in my collection already, but you know, when you see something for a deal and it's in such great condition, it's really hard to resist. My other most recent acquisition is this funny little, I don't know, donut toy hat tilted hat from the 1940s. I did pick this up on Etsy from Lilies and Remains, a very popular vintage store because they have the most excellent stock and Sarah is a vintage expert and has excellent taste as well. So I picked this up from Lilies and Remains and it's just got these little loops that are wired to have this tilt on the back of the head like this. And of course I would probably put a pin in this or a bobby pin to really secure this buddy like so, but you can just wear this little tilted donut on your head. This is a very typical 1940s hat, of course, in this great mustard yellow color that I could wear with so many things, especially because I love yellow as an accent color. I don't usually wear yellow all over, but as an accessory, I quite like it. This hat is possibly homemade as well. You can kind of see the way this is constructed inside of here. It's got like some wool batting or stuffing inside of here, and then just a grow grain ribbon to keep this in place. And this is just a quilted it almost looks like it's a knit fabric up close and then it has these glass bugle beads on the top as a extra fun accent and i always like a rainbow accent so the fact that this has all these colors represented means that i could probably wear this with my remix high heeled shoes my shoes like this i do think these would look really great together especially with like a navy blue 1940s dress or suit and possibly my telephone cord clutch handbag as well and while that hat is more of a like donut or kind of button shape little tilt hat this hat is more of a pillbox and this is probably from the 1950s or 60s this hat and it still is in its original box now when i bought this hat i thought it was faux fur because clearly i didn't read the description uh, close enough, but this is actually real fur. I do try not to buy real fur, even vintage, but this is, I assume, a rabbit fur pillbox hat. It's just got buckram construction inside and a little bit of almost cardboard in the sides of this. I'm not sure if that cardboard is meant to stay in here or not, but it adds a lot of structure to the hat, so I'm going to keep it in there. And while I assume that this is a little bit of a later hat, something from the 50s or 60s even, um, this is still a perfectly acceptable 1940s style. This is a style that was popular from the late 30s through the 60s, a pillbox even in this smaller shape. Of course, you just see them worn differently in the 40s. They're often worn tilted quite for forward. And in the 60s, you see pillboxes on the back of the head instead. But this one does have a little hat elastic in here. I probably should replace it. And you can see why I'm going to ruin my hair doing this. But you can see it's just this little powder puff of a thing. And it's just quite fun, especially if I had my hair a little bit bigger, I think, and uh, with some aqua gloves perhaps to match. I think it's super fun, especially for fall and winter time, but I've just been keeping this in the little plastic box it came in, like so. Um, I, you know, would prefer a faux fur one, but 
oops, I accidentally ended up buying a real fur one. And since my hair is already destroyed, let's go ahead and talk about this late 30s hat next. I'm assuming this is a 30s or early 1940s hat just based off of the shape, especially once it's on. Although having a half hat is much more of a 1950s sort of thing. Clearly it started early on because this one is almost like a little half hat here, but it has this crown of felt petals a lot across the top of this. And this is in black, which means it blends in with my hair a little bit, but the shaping is so sculptural that I feel like it, uh, it stands for itself even amongst my dark hair. Let me just put this one on here. And I just think this petal crown thing, it's just delicious and I love it. But I think with suiting or dresses, this would work really well with a late 30s or 1940s look. And it just screams film noir dame to me. And I absolutely love this hat. And here in front, I also have a couple of other tilt hats that are also black and in this case, sequined as well. And this is a, another New York Creations labeled hat, but nothing else on here. It's labeled as adjustable. And this is, uh, I've seen a couple of hats like this. It's kind of almost a beret style with this network of sequins on it. And then it has these calla lilies made out of black felt to match as well. And I wear this one tilted kind of like so, although my hair is, wow, really falling apart like that. And it has a band with a little bit of elastic in the back that really holds it onto your head quite well. And I just think again, for evening, out to dinner, for the theater, this one, has few enough sequins that I think you can get away with it for daytime, but the next one I'm gonna show you is too sequined, I think, for daytime, sadly enough. But this one, I think I could get away with it, perhaps. And again, with 40s hats, you wear, can wear them quite low and quite tilted down like this, especially if you add veiling. But this one, uh, it's in pretty good condition, especially, again, for its age, and it's just so pretty and feels very, again, film noir, which I will say about 800 times in this video because that is what really draws me to a hat, is if I can feel like a film noir dame in the hat. But yes, this other black sequin hat here, which I still have to figure out exactly how best to dust because uh, these are, I'm sure, gelatin sequins from the 1940s and I don't want to ruin them in any way, but I have to get some dust off of here. Possibly one of those things that you use to the air, uh, pressure air things that you use to clean your keyboard. Those work quite well for hats usually. Um, but this one is a Berkshire, Berkshire, 94% wool and 6% casein um, from Moan Brothers company. Um, KCN is of course milk protein, <laughs> which is how they uh, like help stiffen hats, I think is what they use that for. But they used to make different plastic products out of milk proteins. That was called KCN, which is kind of gross. Let's just not think about it. This is all covered in the sequence with a velvet ribbon and it has a little way to hold it onto your head because of course you wear this like so. And this one is rather a sort of like burlesque or evening little theatrical hat, of course, covered in sequins like this. It's very fun for wearing out and about. And I have not actually been able to wear this one out yet, but I'm excited to do so. This next hat is again in wool, this time in dark chocolate brown wool. This is Holly Vogue hats made in California. It's got a little bit of a like interior cap here that sits on your head. And of course, these olive green ostrich feathers on it. This sits like this and you can use that uh, cap in the back to pin this buddy on. And it's just fabulous, especially it would be great with a brown suit. Sadly, I do not have a brown or an olive green suit, but this would be spectacular with either of those. Of course, also with tan or many other different colors. I think with like a cranberry, any fall color, I think this would pair well with, or rust, pumpkin orange. But I just love this hat. This one I did spot on eBay for quite a deal. So I picked this one up on eBay and uh, I love an ostrich feather. I love green. We know I couldn't resist this buddy. I have another 1940s navy blue straw hat here with some flowers in the front. This one again is meant to sit tilted on the head. It has a no label other than the consumer protection label and a size 22 label. 22 is pretty standard, like average size. And this one just again is worn on the head, tilted like so. I mean, you could wear this one centered or probably off to the side. I'm more likely to wear it off to the side and then with an addition of veiling perhaps as well. Really good for summertime once again. And I really like the colors of these flowers on this buddy. I do keep this next one with acid-free paper inside as well. This one is super quality, 94% wool and 6% Arlac. Not sure what that is. Might be another milk protein kind of thing. Body by Merrimack Hat again, a uh, company. This again is almost a little bit of a beret. It does have a hat elastic in here as well. Although the elastic has lost most of its elasticity, blocked beret style in this lovely Kelly green color, kind of clover green color. Of course, we all know how I love green. I pair with green gloves with a black suit. I think it'd be super cute. And this hat I did receive for Christmas this last year, but I do keep this one stuffed again with 
tissue paper just to help it keep its shape because it does have quite a fun little shape. And another green 1940s wool hat here. This one is much more of, I think this is a, I think of this is a very like cover girl, the Rita Hayworth film shape of hat, this one that stands up in the back like this. Now this one does have a full like light uh, weight kind of, almost feels like a silk veiling probably. Um, original veil here that is actually in pretty good condition. It might have been replaced at some point, but it looks, it feels like original veiling because it's such a fine quality and they don't really make that kind of veiling anymore. And it does have this felt dot trimming around the edge as well. But I can show you how this one goes on. It's really gonna destroy my hair. But this one goes like this. And I mean, really now. This is such a great 1940s style with this dip in the front. It's just spectacular, honestly. And I uh, cannot wait to wear this with suiting. It makes me feel like a 1940s villain, which my makeup is helping with here as well. And the veiling uh, is so tight on this, like around the face, it really helps to hold the hat on, which is quite nice. But the shape on this is just fantastic. I wish I could have this shape, like hat base, or like however they blocked this. I wish I could know how, because I would love to have this in various colors, especially with the height of this is so nice. Um, these hats that sit up on the back of the head and really frame like a poodle hairstyle. If you have your hair poodled, it looks really good. And that hat I did find on Etsy as well. And this I also found on Etsy. This is a small black satin tricorn. That's right. This is a little tiny pirate hat in black silk satin with a lovely silk and velvet rose on the top. So, I mean, Come on, a miniature tilted pirate hat? There's no way. I mean, it's just amazing. For someone who loves 18th century fashion and 19, like 30s and 40s fashion, this is about the best combo anyone could ask for. I think the only way this could be better is if the rose were yellow instead of pink, but even the pink rose, I'm still in love. A black silk tricorn, miniature tricorn hat. I would wear this with Victorian and 18th century costuming as well. I would not restrict this to 1930s and 40s outfits because it's just about as spectacular as it gets. And again, this hat was found online on Etsy. I usually type in 1940s hat and just see what's new and things like this do come up. This is over a felt base. So the blocked uh, tricorn underneath is in felt. This is all sewn on here though. And uh, there's no labeling in here whatsoever. And it's just about as adorable as it gets, like I said. I absolutely adore this hat. Another hat that I've actually found at Boss Vintage was this buddy here. This one does have some holes in its veiling. I should probably replace this. It's super delicate, but a lovely hat. This is actually a uh, 1940s tilted hat here. It does have the um, New York Creations label on the inside, adjustable. It still has its little band, but this is a knit rayon, I assume, fabric from the 1940s, like a knit jersey rayon, which is a uh, rare enough fabric now, but it used to be very, very popular in the 1940s. This one's elastic around this band needs to be replaced. It's very, very sad. It's a little bit brighter on the band compared to the top anymore, of course, but uh, just about, again, as stunning as a 40s hat can get. <sighs> I mean, I wish it was still this brightly colored on the outside, but even, the, even in its faded glory, it's still quite glorious. Again, wear it tilted to the side, if you'd like, or tilted centered like so. I just think, how could I not, you know? How could I not? Like that. Mm. And this again was another Christmas gift. I was actually out vintage shopping and my mom offered to buy me this hat as an early Christmas present. And so that is how I acquired this one. And again, with navy blue suiting or dresses, I just think it would be divine. I think I probably could get away with wearing this with brown and black too, because the way that the fabric has faded, it has brown, black, and blue kind of involved in all of these colors. I could probably wear this with anything. But for me, this is about as good as it possibly gets uh, for a find out and about while vintage shopping. And again, I found some really, truly great hats at Boss Vintage. I'll show you another one in a minute here that is just truly stunning. And sometimes I just, I just beeline to the back where the 1940s suiting is and then the hats are. And every once in a while, there's a gem hiding back there for me. Hair's getting wilder and wilder here. I do have another straw hat to show you. This one with a black grosgrain ribbon trimming. It's got like this fan of ribbon over the side here. And I just love the shape on this one. It's kind of turned up a little bit at the back. And you can turn this down if you want to as well. It makes it a bit more of a cone shape, but I love the tilt up that this seems to have here in the back. Um, this again has a Peter Sham ribbon with a little bit of elastic to hold it onto the head. This has a consumer protection label. Uh, made under fair labor standards. If only we still 
had standards. Um, this one to say adjustable. That's just because this is elastic and meant to tilt just on the head. Um, it's not meant to fit low on the head. But again, this elastic secures down and this one actually feels quite secure. I have worn this one out and about. It wasn't too breezy of a day, so I had no trouble wearing this just with the hat elastic like so. I wore this to the Denver Botanic Gardens recently. Um, you might have seen that on Instagram. I think I put a picture wearing this hat up there, but absolutely perfect for summertime. This one was just in great condition. I spotted it on Etsy and I did go ahead and purchase this buddy, which we all know I did not need another large straw summer hat, but with a black accent like this, and I'm trying to move my summer style into something that's like more uh, generically vintage into something that is a bit more kind of film noir inspired and trying to make that work for summertime. And I thought that this would be helpful in that endeavor. But yes, I have four more hats hiding underneath this tissue paper here. I told you it was gonna be quite a few. This is the other hat that I found from Boss Vintage. And you know, it's, it's this one's rusty cousin uh, because these are very similar colored feathered accents going on here. You have seen this if you've seen, um, I've worn it in a couple of videos, I think, but I definitely wore it in the Halloween lookbook from last year. This is a rusty tilt hat, <laughs> rusty brown colored tilt hat from the 1940s. This one is Studio Styles by Warner Brothers, designing staff Hollywood. So this is another uh, Warner Brothers branded hat. Of course, they were trying to uh, like copy the styles of the stars in their films. And uh, I wish films still you know, had merchandising where instead of a t-shirt, it was gorgeous hats. How I would love to visit the Warner Brothers like hat shop I don't know where that was in Hollywood, but I'd love to go back in time that day. But this is a rusty brown hat with olive green veiling. Uh, it's not meant to be, the veiling isn't meant to be pulled down. It's just up here arranged on the hat with this spray of olive green feathers in the back. And it does have a strap to hold this on the head. And it's just, you know, once again, absolutely too good, honestly, just too good. And this rusty orange kind of brown color still pairs well with black, I think. So I can wear this with either black or brown, or again, navy, almost anything. It's such a great accent. <sighs> I love this hat. I found this one at Boss Vintage as well, uh, a few months before that other hat. And that's why I just always make a beeline for the back because you never know what's hiding back there waiting for me. Next up, I have this very, I'm always on the hunt for this style of hat. Very, very cute 1940s hat, probably from the late 30s into the early half of the 40s. This is a little kind of straw cap style with three bows across the very top of it that almost look like kitten ears. I see kitten eared hats in a lot of my 1940s pattern uh, catalogs and pattern books, and also in my uh, 1940s catalogs like Montgomery Ward's catalogs and such, but I don't see the hats very often. So I'm always on the lookout for the actual vintage hats because I, while I see them in pictures and in old ephemera, I don't come across the hats very often. I would love more kitten eared hats in my life, um, but I can show you how this one goes on. The veiling is still here. It doesn't seem to have any holes, but it's very fine um, and fragile here. And the hat elastic in here needs to be replaced because she's just downright ancient at this point. But I mean, look at this ridiculous, again, crown of bows this time. This veiling is actually a little bit of an awkward length. It kind of falls bleh, in my lips as I'm talking here because it's neither like eye length nor full length on me. Uh, maybe my face is a little too large for it, but I like to have my bows sticking up quite, you know, tall here because it makes me feel like I'm a little kitten in the best way possible. It's a head turner for sure. Uh, people are gonna look at you if you're wearing this one out and about. But in black, again, in a darker color hat, I like there to be something extra going on, whether it's sequins or the shape being a little bit more sculptural, just because otherwise it does blend into my dark hair. Although right now I have half dark hair and half blonde hair. This one does have a label and it is from Sherman on Fifth Avenue in New York. And it's another size 22 here. Um, I think I could use a size 24 hat veil here, but this is another one that just kind of perches on the back of the head. You could secure that um, even better with hat pins. Now, the last two hats I have to show you are both from Button and Bows, Buttons and Bows Hat Boutique on Etsy, um, a very reputable and very well stocked with absolutely gorgeous hats um, seller on Etsy. They, I think they are a time traveler because they find the most amazing 1940s hats. And I'm pretty sure they just go back in time and only grab like five hats at a time. Um, that's the only way I can conceive of how they get such great things. But this is another black hat, I know. But this one has this pastel chenille rope sort of braided detailing around the side, and then has these bows on the top. This one did have a veil, but it was really coming apart, so I did go ahead and take that one off. Um, I might replace that veil later on. If I can find black vintage veiling is really hard to find. You can find new nylon netting, but it's not nearly the same as actual like silk or even really old stock rayon um, veiling. It's 
just has a complete different weight about it. Um, and I'm really picky and I like vintage veilings and the finding them in black is actually quite hard these days. This one is Belvedere made in the USA, 100% wool. This is another Henry Polak ink distributors, Fifth Avenue here. And this again does have a hat elastic in here to help you hold it onto your head and hold it tilted in the front. This one I think is an old one because it feels a little bit brittle. I'm not sure if it's a 40s hat elastic because then it would be really brittle. But this again, you can wear centered here or you can wear off tilted to the side, like so, down low over the eye and over the face. I have worn this one out and about, but I don't think I got pictures or on camera of that. So here it is, what it looks like on. I think it's super cute. Again, could be wearing with aqua or pink gloves or white gloves as well with a black outfit or any of these colors. Not that I wear pastel colors, probably most likely to wear this one with black or with gray. Oh, the hair is really starting to go, friends. I have one last hat to show you though. This one is again from Button and Bows on Etsy. This is, once again, we're talking about like film noir dames. Come on. This is a black hat. It's got pleated wool in this sort of saucer style and this really great netting with chenille polka dots hanging off the back of it. And this has a little bit of makeup on the inside. This one is labeled the Monil Company Adjustable Head Size Akron. Um, so Finally, a hat that's not from New York, but I mean, come on. Once again, it's just ridiculous. You can wear this different ways. This one, you know, I can tilt it off to the side quite a lot. It's quite a, a saucer landing on the head. Again, very sculptural, which I like for a darker colored hat. No navy today, I've noticed. Uh, navy straws, but no navy wool today. But here is this rather spectacular, again, sculptural, probably late 30s, 40s hat. Not exactly sure. The label looks quite old on this one. So this may be a cusp hat between the 30s and 40s sometime. And it's uh, rather surreal and strange. These pom-poms of chenille, it's just so fun. And I know I've said this about all of them, but I, I adore this hat. Well, now that my hair is thoroughly destroyed, I will bid you Ado. So those are the vintage hats I have added to my collection over the last year. It is actually quite a lot <laughs> once I see it all together like this. So I do feel a little bit worse now. Um, but at the same time, we all know I am a hoarder when it comes to vintage accessories, so it's not exactly surprising. Thank you as always for watching today, and I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.